We've talked before on the show about Fox News' obsession with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and it's beyond the point where, you know, we can accurately classify their obsession with her as pathetic, but it's starting to honestly get a little bit creepy because now what they're doing is they are fishing through her Instagram in order to find a reason to attack her based on something that she said. So she had this Instagram live stream and she said the most benign, insignificant thing, um, most uh, uncontroversial thing ever, and they still tried to find some way to attack her for it and said that she was insulting the past generation when in actuality she was really just praising her own generation but they didn't really know how to attack her that was evident so what this segment turned into was essentially them just bashing millennials that's what this was it was an anti-aoc segment that devolved into a millennial bashing spree and then towards the end they are going to reveal that all the problems that they have with millennials are actually applicable to them as well well, not even kidding. So everything that they say will be disqualified after they say, oh, well, you know what? This thing that I hear about millennials is also true for me. It's just, it's unbelievable. Fox News, I mean, to say that they're a joke is the understatement of the century. But let's watch, and then I have a lot to say. Progressive darling Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is turning some heads in her latest Instagram Live video. The New York Congresswoman boldly claiming millennials and Generation Z are, quote, more informed and are, quote, willing to go to the streets in protest and are more well-versed in history. Ocasio-Cortez apparently forgetting about the civil rights movement and Vietnam War activism of the 1960s. Oh, and there's that conflict of World War II, the greatest generation that saved the world from authoritarian rule because of the sacrifice of teenagers. Here's Ocasio-Cortez. This is great. I think that um, they're badass. I think young people are more informed and dynamic than, than their predecessors. I think they're profoundly courageous because they're willing to puncture taboos and, conversa and have conversations that, frankly, older generations sometimes struggle to have. Hello, Brian. <laughs> yeah, they took to the streets to <laughs> celebrate buff. victory against fascism and Nazism. Same thing. Took to the streets when, uh, uh, when they were actually trying to fight for our freedom. And they actually did take to the streets in the Depression to get food. So that was lining up in a so uh, as soup lines and bread lines. So it's unbelievable that the people at Boston University must be just cringing, holding their heads under the desk right now. She graduated and feels she's part of the greatest generation. Hey, our military is as good as it ever is. But as a right now as a society, there's a reason. Uh, if you watched the D-Day celebration and you saw who fought and what was at stake, I, uh, you'd be embarrassed. I can't by believe it. you're dissing the millennials, Brian. I'm yeah. so offended I, right now. Well, I think millennials <laughs> should stand up and defend the greatest generation. No, I completely agree. <laughs> Look, there are a number of uh, people People in our generation who have done amazing things, the people who joined the military after 9-11, that was a defining moment of our generation. Uh, people in the tech industry, Mark Zuckerberg, who created Facebook, I know there's a lot of questions and problems with Facebook, but it changed the world. Um, but this idea that we're going to say that we are better than the greatest generation that saved the world from authoritarianism, Nazism, communism, um, really is quite disrespectful and ironic considering she's saying that previous generations don't know about American history when they're the ones who uh, set it up so we have a free future. I, I think that part of what has happened here is it's this this AOC Instagram live in and of itself is reflective of the self-absorbed culture that we currently live in. And I hate to diss millennials too and I cling to my Gen X oh, it's status. Okay. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, present company excluded, but you know, <laughs> Thank it, you. honest to God, I mean, what I see here is a self-absorbed generation that thinks that because they tweet and because they march with funny hats, that somehow that they have some sort of moral superiority um, that is going to change the world. I, I, my grandfather, who served in World War II, would beg to differ. The greatest generation my, stormed Normandy Beach so that she could Instagram live in her kitchen. That's right. Thank there you, you go. Right with full face and makeup. I want to point out, and we left out all the kind of completely off the charts discussion about climate change but yeah ahead, the one that she also does on instagram yeah about the life. diseases i use instagram in all the time too so me too i, me too. I love that instagram. person that you were talking about so they complained about how self-absorbed millennials like aoc are you know we're always taking selfies and we're on the twitter and the facebook and then they admitted oh i actually love instagram 
this AOC Instagram Live in and of itself is reflective of the self-absorbed culture. 12 seconds later. Me too, I love that Instagram. That person that you were talking about. Me too, I love that Instagram. That person that you so what was the point of you criticizing AOC? How is millennials, uh, you know, seeming obsession with social media relevant to what she said about her generation being awesome and second of all are you honestly saying that uh older generations gen x and boomers don't like social media because there's literally subreddits of basically just boomer posts it's called insane people facebook everyone is on social media because we have access to the internet a lot of people do so we're just all on social media in fact i think that platforms like facebook are probably more popular among older generations and instagram is more popular among uh younger generations so i don't even know how that cr uh, criticism was relevant but for them to just basically criticize aoc and millennials for one thing and then admit that they're also guilty of that it shows that they they had no objective going into this segment. They just watched something of AOC and they tried to look for a reason to criticize her. See, that just makes you look like hacks. And let's get to AOC's quote here. Quote, I think they're badass, meaning her generation. I think young people are more informed and dynamic than their predecessors. I think they're profoundly courageous because they're willing to puncture taboos and have conversations that, frankly, older generations sometimes struggle to have. How is that controversial? How is that something that is offensive to you? How is that disrespectful to previous generations? How? It's factually correct think about this she says that we're more informed and dynamic than our predecessors we have cell phones now all of us have cell phones we literally have infinite knowledge at our disposal anytime we need it previous generations did not have that access to information had more barriers you had to listen to the radio or you know read the newspaper but you couldn't specifically seek out a very you know, a specific set of information or knowledge about something unless you went to the library. Now we can stay home. I can learn about something while I'm taking a dump. That's what she's talking about here. Access to the information that we seek to grow and educate ourselves with has increased. How is that controversial? Um, she also says that our generation is more willing to puncture taboos. How is that debatable? LGBTQ people have existed since human beings have existed. But yet, we're only talking about that now because my generation has pushed the envelope. We've been open about our sexual orientations and gender identities, whereas that really was taboo for the previous generation. Now, it's probably going to be the case that there are taboos now that my generation won't discuss, that the next generation will. That's just the way that, you know, society functions. You know, there's always growth. Uh, society is always growing. We are always changing. We're just a dynamic species. That's what we are. So how is what she said disrespectful to uh, the previous generations? And all that they could, you know, invoke is people who fought during World War II. So basically, oh, well, really? Millennials are better? What about the people who fought during World War II? Okay, I'm sure that she would say that she respects them. What's your point? It's not an insult to say you think your generation is the best. That's not an insult. Is it an insult to every other country to say that you think America is in the number one country? Because we all know that the nationalists over at Fox News would say that. So I just, I, they are going out of their way to look for reasons to be offended. It's almost as if they're like the snowflakes they frequently denounce on their program. But here's what Brian Kilmeade said. He just straight up made word salad. I don't even understand the point he was trying to make. She graduated and feels she's part of the greatest generation? Hey, our military's as good as it ever is, but right now as a society, there's a reason if you watched the D-Day celebration and saw who fought and what was at stake, you'd be embarrassed. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, I genuinely don't know what he was trying to say. He just knew that he was offended or maybe... You know, he had to be offended, even though what he was saying, it seemed contrived. But he just, he knew that this was an anti-AOC segment, so he had to come up with something. And he couldn't, which is why he just made word salad and came up with this weird, incoherent argument against what she said. When it's not, again, it, it's banal. It, it's unimportant, right? She's not arguing 
aren't old people just terrible? Aren't boomers so stupid? Like, aren't their posts really incoherent and batshit insane? She's not making that argument. Jesus Christ. Now, one of the other hosts said, this idea that we're going to say we're better than the greatest generation that saved the world from authoritarianism, Nazism, communism, really is quite disrespectful and ironic considering she's saying that previous generations don't know about American history. So first of all, she did not say that. She did not say that our generation knows more about American history than previous generations. If you're going to lie about her quote, then you can't play the clip for us. You have to hide that away. But she also took issue with AOC's assertion that we are more informed. Again, we have unlimited knowledge in the palms of our hands. Of course, we are literally more informed because we have that now. And I love how, you know, she threw in, oh, well, the previous generation, the silent generation, the greatest generation, they helped defeat Nazis and communism. Didn't communists help defeat Nazis? And at this point, that's where they kind of lay off of AOC and it just it devolved into millennial bashing and that's when it switched from them being triggered to me being triggered because i don't understand why millennials are always the targets of uh, being bashed when we can't help the fact that we graduated into an economy that was not hospitable to us we graduated during the great recession we will retire into the apocalypse you guys the previous generations you attended college and graduated with little to no debt. You can get a full-time job or even a part-time job working at Taco Bell and within a couple of years, save up enough to buy a house, put yourself through school, buy a car. We don't have that luxury. So I don't understand why people hate millennials so much. And then the other host chimed in and said the greatest generation stormed Normandy Beach so she could Instagram live in her kitchen. I mean, how petty is that? Just admit that you don't like AOC. That you can say the same thing about you. The greatest generation stormed Normandy Beach so you can go on Fox News and espouse these right-wing talking points that are fed to you by Fox News producers. You can say that about anything. What's the point? What does that prove about AOC? How does that prove that her economic and social ideology is bad for people? It doesn't. Now, here's where they kind of show their cards and reveal how stupid they are. A host chimed in and said this about AOC. We left out the off-the-charts discussion about climate change, about the diseases being frozen in ice. So during that Instagram live stream, I haven't seen this, um, AOC apparently talked about how with climate change, with temperatures rising, that will lead to new diseases re-emerging, new for us anyways, that are trapped in the ice. And that Fox News host claimed that AOC was stupid for believing that. But this is a headline from BBC. There are diseases hidden in the ice and they are waking up. Long dormant bacteria and viruses trapped in ice and permafrost for centuries are reviving as the Earth's climate warms. So she's right and you're wrong. And the fact that you insinuated that she might be dumb or insane for suggesting that shows how out of touch and misinformed you are. So this is really the tragedy of this segment. In an attempt to make AOC seem like this, you know, brainless, uh, ditzy young person, they ended up making themselves look like petulant, petty children. And it's just, I honestly, I feel bad for them. Well, I don't really feel bad for them, but I feel bad that they had a goal, they had this objective to attack AOC, and they just ended up putting out this cringe-inducing segment where it just showed that we just attack AOC for the sake of attacking her because she is a political opponent, and we're going to do whatever we can, whenever we can, to try to make her look bad. So if that means we've got to creep on her Instagram and try to see if she says anything, you know, that might be deemed controversial possibly, or maybe we can misinterpret to sell to our audience as controversial, I think that that would behoove us to do. I mean, they had to have thought, what are we supposed to do with this segment? What are we supposed to say about this clip? This isn't really an issue. I don't care about this. Is this really something that we should be attacking her for? When, I mean, maybe we can bring up something else that we disagree with. Maybe a policy. They're just... <laughs> they're just stupid. And they only embarrass themselves here. And they're only helping AOC um, because they're boosting her name recognition. And they're making themselves look idiotic in the process. So I guess keep it up because it's not hurting her. It's only helping her and hurting you.
Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.